The 90s gave us a lot of tat. Tamagotchis, Beanie Babies, Mark Wahlberg, Red Dwarf 8. But it also gave us an entirely new genre of video game, the first person shooter. There'd been a few attempts at first person games in the 80s, but the genre didn't really take off until id Software's Wolfenstein 3D and their second, more successful follow-up, Doom. There's really nothing I can tell you about Doom that you don't already know. It's basically responsible for the entire genre, to the extent that for most of the 90s they weren't called first person shooters, they were called Doom clones. Which is a bit like referring to every single sci-fi movie as a Frankenstein clone, even if it doesn't feature a single reanimated corpse. While Doom was about exploration, discovery, and yes, blasting basketball-sized holes through the abdomens of Hellspawn using a double-barreled shotgun, it was, for the most part, a fairly claustrophobic experience, and few FPS games did much to challenge this formula as the 21st century rolled around in 2000. Or 2001, if you're one of those people. Enter Serious Sam, a turn-of-the-century retro-style first-person shooter with masses of enemies, secrets and easter eggs, all seemingly pulled straight out of the Doom design document, though it perhaps has more in common with Midway's Smash TV, as it has you going from location to location, taking on hordes of enemies such as headless soldiers, headless grenadiers, headless kamikaze bombers, and these guys, who are you know, basically all head. It doesn't just keep you hidden away in rooms and chambers either, the game features some of the widest vistas seen in a first-person shooter at the time, surrounding you with nature and, in many places, an endless expanse of desert. The sheer size of this game broke my brain when I first played it, and the visuals were, for the time, pretty bloody spectacular, especially considering the game's fairly low minimum system requirements. Even my mother was floored by the way that this game looks, though, in fairness, she did start to go a bit blind towards the end. Serious Sam was split into two titles for its initial PC release, the Ancient Egypt-bound First Encounter, released in 2001, and the Second Encounter, set in Mesoamerica and released in 2002. Both were priced as budget titles, but were later combined into one complete title for two releases, Serious Sam Gold Edition on the PC, and a port for the Xbox simply titled Serious Sam. The developers at Crow Team made a number of changes to this port at the behest of the publishers, some of which are downright odd. For a start, there's the increased emphasis on the game's story, with brand new cutscenes and dialogue added to several places in the game. Which is a bit of an odd choice considering that the narrative in Serious Sam has all the richness and depth of a Spice Girls music video. Just once I'd like to wake up in the morning and not have to fight off an alien invasion. The presentation of the thing is significantly cartoonier as well. Not that the PC version is particularly realistic, but so much has changed for the Xbox version from Sam's comic book style character model, which is much more top heavy than the model used in the PC original, to the game's HUD, which uses a goofier font and more vibrant colours than its PC counterpart. It's ironic juxtaposition. A game called Serious Sam is actually quite a frivolous and comical affair. <laughs> what a romp. Some of the enemies have been re-skinned too, sometimes arbitrarily so, though it's probably to make them less muddy on the television. The enemies don't just look different though, they act different. Their behaviour is much less cautious and much more aggressive, and they're more likely to jump from ledges and move in closer to you as they attempt to steal your torso. Of course, this is offset by the game's new auto-aim system, which conveniently too conveniently, targets enemies quickly and easily for you, making them simpler to kill. In fact, it's actually possible to kill an enemy using a double-barreled shotgun from across the room in this version, which is just nonsense. I mean, if I want to kill someone with a shotgun, I want to be close enough to see the light in their eyes go out. Which is, you know, difficult enough as it is, considering that most of these guys do not have heads. The developers have also attempted to make concessions for the console market. To replace the quick save feature that is common to PC-based FPS games of the day, they introduced two brand new mechanics, a save point system using phone boxes to save your progress, and an arcade-style live system that rewards you with lives based on your score and your progress through each level, which you can use to respawn right back into the middle of the fight you were just killed in. 
It's a decent change and a solid replacement for quick saving, but this game gives out lives with the frequency of a modern day Mario game, and because the game respawns you into the same place where you died, rather than, you know, restoring from a save point, you don't have to re-kill any of the dude men you'd hit before you got your clock punched, which is nice, but it does detract from the challenge. Other than that, this is by and large a pretty decent port. There have been a couple of other changes made for technical reasons. For instance, some of the larger levels in the game have been split into two smaller levels, and some of the cutscenes that were rendered in-game on the PC version have been pre-rendered as FMVs here, meaning there is a lot of footage on this disc of Sam just walking down a hallway. Arguably, the Xbox version of Serious Sam has had the biggest impact on the series as a whole. Serious Sam 2 was released simultaneously for the PC and the Xbox in October 2005, and both versions use the menu, HUD, and live system of the Xbox port of its predecessor, though it does have an autosave feature rather than the phone box save points. Croteam released individual high-def updates of both the first and second encounters for the PC and Xbox 360 between 2009 and 2010, and for both versions, they opted to go back to the HUD from the original PC release. And finally, the PC-exclusive Serious Sam Classics Revolution on Steam includes the Xbox HUD as an optional extra if you're the sort of person, you know, who hates nice things. I'll say this about Serious Sam, it's aged exceptionally well. I mean, yeah, the Xbox version, not so much. But in researching this episode, I played a lot of Serious Sam on the PC. And though the graphics in the original don't look quite as good now as they did 14 years ago, the game is still exceptionally fun to play. It's challenging, it's visually distinct, and it's fun. And that really makes it stand out among other FPS games of the era that were either trying too hard to be dark, broody, humorless affairs, or were World War II shooters that had a storm Normandy beach for the Kuala Lumpur pillionth time. You can pick up the HD remakes on Steam or Xbox Live Arcade, or you can go super retro and pick up the original PC versions of the game on Steam. Either way, I'm sure you'll agree, the fact that I made it to the end of this episode without making a joke about the name of the game is a serious achievement. Oh, God damn it! Enemy soldiers frequently display dazzling acts of stupidity, from pointing and shooting at walls, to running right up to you and staring at you for several seconds, as if they wanted to ask you a question but can't quite remember what it was. A deceptively complex puzzle game involving green-haired little shits in blue jumpsuits just trying to get on with their lives without getting stomped, smushed, or splattered. You are not gonna like that chocolate, I'll tell you that. <laughs> You as a chocolate Susan, which is what I decide people, like British people that don't like <laughs> American chocolate are chocolate Susan.